how do you know which theorem you're supposed to use? You go through the question statements and you're going to be guided by the keywords, right? And then from the keywords, you should be able to answer all the questions only sticking to that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In the diagram, O is the center of the circle. So there's a keyword, center of the circle. Because we know that uh, there's a few things we know about the center of the circle. And then it goes on to say that um, EC is a tangent to the circle at C. And then another keyword is tangent, right? We know that there's a theorem around the tangent. Diameter DB is produced. And then again, we have diameter because, yeah, that is important to us here. And then uh, what else do we have? Uh, BF is said to be perpendicular to EC. Radius CO produced by sex AD and G. BC and CD are done. When the radius have uh, bisects AD, so here's AD, right? Uh, that is theorem one or the converse. So we have theorem one. So yeah, we shall be able to answer all equations only using these uh, five keywords, right? So let's go ahead and see if that will work. So we have 10.2.1 as the first question. So the first question is saying, let's prove given reasons that uh, this line FB, so we always FB, FB is right here, is parallel to line CG. So let's go ahead and see if uh, the first keyword center can help us in, in, in any way, right? I cannot see a direct way in which the center would help us. So let's go and move. Uh, so let's move to tangent and see if we can uh, do something there. Uh, the only thing we can deduce from the tangent is that uh, this angle here is 90 degrees, right? Because um, the tangent and the radius will always be perpendicular to each other when they touch, right? So we can say that um, angle BC, uh, BC what? Uh, BCO is equal to uh, 90 degrees and why are we saying so we know that the tangent is perpendicular uh, to the radius but then we are given that f1 is equal to 90 degrees right right here f1 is equal to 90 uh, degrees so you can see now that we have two corresponding angles so the two lines must be parallel to each other so right now we're going to go ahead and say that uh, f1 is equal to angle B C O because they are all equal to 90 degrees. So as a consequence, we can conclude and say that F B is parallel to C G as we have uh, corresponding angles. Right. And then now let's do uh, 10.2.2. 10.2.2 says let's prove that uh, triangle F C B it's similar to triangle C D B, right? So let's just um, sort of highlight our triangle so that we can see what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we have F C B and triangle C D B. So it's D C D B. So we're going to prove that these triangles are similar using angle, angle, angle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When they name the triangles in this equation, they name them such that uh, this angle F here in FCB should be equal to angle C in CDB, right? So we're saying that uh, this angle right here, F, should be equal to this angle right here, right? So let's see how we can prove that, right? Uh, we actually are uh, going to use the diameter to deduce the size of uh, this angle here, right? Because it's been subtended by the diameter. So we can say that angle um, C1 plus C2 is equal to 90 degrees because it's been subtended uh, by the diameter. And now we need to prove that this angle here is also 90 degrees, right? How can we do that? We can say that uh, F1 plus F2 is equal to 180 but f1 is 90 degrees right so fq should be equal to 90 degrees and you know this is the sum of angles on a straight line 
now we have proved that those angles are equal and we can go ahead and find another pair so now we're going to go to angle c in triangle fcb and angle d in triangle cdb so where is angle c in triangle fcb angle c is right here right we're supposed to prove that it is equal to this angle right here and it is easy to see that uh, angle c1 is between uh, the tangent and the chord right and then this chord is subtending this angle d2 right so that is the tan chord theorem so we can go ahead and say that uh, angle c1 is equal to angle a d2 because of the tan chord theorem because of the tan chord theorem right so now we've proved that uh, two pairs of angles are equal we just left with the third one and then now lastly we can say that um angle f b f b c this third angle here of triangle f c b is equal to angle b3 which is in triangle CBD, right? Uh, why are we seeing that uh, third angle of a triangle? If the two other angles are equal to each other, then the third angles should also be equal to each other because uh, the sum of angles on triangle is the same, right? So yeah, now we have proved that uh, indeed triangle FCB is similar to triangle C. DB because angle 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 yeah all those angles are equals to each other right and uh, 10.2.2 let's give a reason why G1 is equals to 90 degrees so let's go ahead and look at where G1 is located so G1 is right here right here yeah let's give a reason why it is equals to 90 degrees uh, that is theorem one right so the reason is that a line from center to midpoint of chord is perpendicular to the chord and then if it is perpendicular to the chord then consequently g1 should be equals to 90 degrees you know just like g2 right that is theorem one and then now 10.2 Point three. Let's prove the reasons uh, why CD squared is equal to CG multiplied by uh, DB. So what I like doing here is to write CD as CD multiplied by CD being equal to CG multiplied by uh, DB just to have a bit of clarity let's go ahead and highlight this size so that we can see which triangles uh, we're interested in so i'm just gonna remove all that so we have line cd so yes line uh, cd let me just highlight it so that we can see what we're talking about and then we have line cg so i'm just gonna highlight it also so we have line uh, cg right here right so let me just highlight it and then we have db who is db yeah db is right here db is right here right so uh we can close this triangle here and we can close this triangle here so it looks like we're interested in triangle c g d and triangle c b d so if we prove that uh, these two triangles are similar to each other then we can play with the proportions so let's look at triangle c g d you should be able to see real quick here that d2 here is 90 degrees right and then uh, this angle c2 plus c3 it's also 90 degrees because it's been subtended by a, a diameter right now we just need to prove that two other angles are equal to each other and the two triangles will be similar we can now attempt to prove that uh, this angle d2 here is equal to uh, this angle uh, c3 right yeah d2 is in triangle cbd and c3 is in triangle cdg so um we have a We've already said that uh, C1 is equal to D2 because of the tan chord 
theorem right so if we prove that c3 is equals to c1 then we are basically saying that c3 is equals to d2 but how can we do that so c1 plus c2 is equals to 90 degrees uh, because uh, the tangent is perpendicular to the radius uh, but then c2 plus c3 is equals to 90 degrees because they're being subtended by the diam by the diameter right so as you can see here c1 plus c2 is 90 c2 plus c3 is 90 so clearly c3 is equals to c1 because when you add them to c2 they give you 90 all the time but then we know that c1 is equals to d2 so c3 is equals to d2 and then um angle b c uh b c d is equals to angle c g d because they are all equals to 90 uh 90 degrees right we have talked about why that is the case so we can go ahead and say that uh angle um, b3 is equals to angle d2 plus d1 being uh, the third angle on the triangles right so now we can conclude that triangle c g d is similar to triangle c b d right and then if we have proved that we can then say that uh, c d divided by d b is equals to c g divided by c d if we cross multiply c d squared is equals to d b multiply by c g right this is cg right here 